What's up guys, this is uh, Eagle, your host for Boy Scout and Ball and today we've got Carlo De Nason. Uh, Carlo is a South African rugby player who plays, who recently signed on to play in the Major League Rugby in America and we're just going to chat a bit about him and, and ask him a couple of questions. Uh, so Carlo, just, um, how are you doing dude, how was, uh, how's, how's life? Good, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, it's been good. Uh, Back in South Africa now for a month and a half, so yeah, r- really good seeing old friends and family, and uh, looking forward to uh, getting back into it when I go back. I like it, man. It's uh, it's it's good to hear. So um, let's just chat about. Let's just, just tell the the people listening in just a bit about yourself. Where do you come from? You know, why rugby? Yeah, sure. Just give us a short overview. Uh, so, uh, born and raised in Pretoria, went to school at um, in Afrikaans First Year School. Matriculated in 2014. Um, went to Bloemfontein for two years. Played for the Free State Junior sides under 19, under 21. Um, end of 2017, I decided to uh, look for a new challenge uh, and uh, headed over to the states. Um, yeah. And and how did you get into rugby initially? Was it just because yeah, all of us Afrikaans dudes we just yeah, a forest that I was in the Baliki rugby team, and there you exactly. go. Yeah, I, I think if you're born in South Africa, it's in your mm. the blood, it's in your a DNA. So, r- rugby's always been a huge part of my life and my family's life. So, yeah, I'm glad I can do it for a, a living. And you, you never, you never considered any other sport really. Like from from the start, it was rugby. Or did you think maybe you're going to be a big cricket player or play for Chelsea one day? Oh man, I wish. Um, <laughs> no, so like obviously. Being, uh, I'm like the sports, I'm like country we are. You know, you like a grow up playing four or five sports. And I think the other one I really enjoyed was a, a cricket up until grade 10. Then I decided to focus more on rugby because unfortunately, you know, you can't have the best of both worlds. Yeah. So, yeah. And um, obviously, after, you, after your time at office, you just, you, you went to Bloemfontein and, go, and you played for, for Corsis and Cheetahs. And just tell us a bit about that, that stage in your life, uh, playing for yeah, the Cheetahs. Uh, hit and miss, really. Um, <laughs> I really enjoyed Bloemfontein for the two years I was there. Just felt I was in a system and like with all due respect to the free state, I felt I was in a system that wasn't going to work for me. So end of 2017, I phoned my mom and dad and said, listen, I think I need a new challenge. Um, yeah, and we started looking for uh, for something new. And um, obviously then, then, then you went to the States. And um, just tell us about how like the, the recruitment process there works, because I know there's it's not, a rock, not a lot of rugby in schools yet, yeah. and there's no Craven Week structure like we have here. Yeah. So how did you get from here to, to the States? Yeah, a real shot in the dark, actually. Um, went over on a visitor's visa. I'm like, at first, um, trained with the Glendo Raptors uh, for four months. Uh, after two months, the head coach, uh, David Williams, uh, he said that he wants to help me to get a sports visa, a P1 visa. And yeah, from there, just snowboard into getting a, a P1 visa and then signing my first professional um um, and my contract with them, so yeah. And then obviously uh, you you um, you signed on to to play in the the 20, 2018, 2019 season, and you had a couple of really really impressive performances. Um, I know the people at home don't know maybe, but you played under Sean Davies, who was the incumbent Eagles scrum off at the time, and so on. So um, just talk us just talk us a bit through. You know, like the, the the team culture that you guys have, and and sort of preparations just to give you know the people in South Africa a feel of right. how rugby works in the states. Yeah, so going over, um, obviously not knowing anything about Sean, um, arriving there, and, you know, what an absolutely amazing man. Um, helped me a lot. I'm like personally, I'm like on and off the field. Um, him and his wife, it's absolutely amazing to me. I'm like a second family. Um, Sean was an absolutely great m- mentor um, to have. And um, 
never really felt like a rivalry. We um, well, like a mentorship sort yeah, of like, program it, thing. Yeah, exactly. It was never like a rivalry where we, like, we were really, really good friends, like off the field as well. Um, so yeah, um, Sean and I have a really good um, relationship, and obviously, um, I'm really thankful for his uh, mentorship. Uh, and and obviously, Sean's a, he, he grew up in South Africa yeah, as well. He's um, a, Westville old boy, so yeah. yeah. So I'm sure he probably could, you know, up to you like learn the tricks of the trade a bit in in, in the states and help you settle in. And yeah, absolutely. I guess that's really important because I, I thought there were a lot more South African players that there actually are, but like they, they, there's a couple. But you're not going to find like ten guys in in, in every team that's yeah, from South so Africa. At the Glenda Raptors, where I am, um, we were about six, I think. Myself, Sean, um, Chad London, Robbie Pitzer, and uh, yeah, sorry, five. Yeah, it's five of us. So, yeah, um, it helps obviously having the um, South Africans there. Um, you know, to like um, have a, 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 a chat about um, Super Rugby and whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, other teams have some really good players as well. Joe Peterson um, is playing for San Diego. JP Smith worked for um, Seattle. So yeah, it's it's. Uh, Growing, obviously. You know, that's um, and I, I think really it's a uh, like the MLS is a is comes at a good time for South African rugby players because um, I, I mean I think a lot of people at home know and it's it's not always easy for South African rugby players from your more prestigious schools or whatever to to make it these days yeah. in, in in South Africa due to 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 a variety of reasons and it's great to be actually be able to make a living um, somewhere with rugby you yeah. know because I, I sometimes I think it's just not that is in South Africa, and I'm sure if you, if you compare it to, to, to like your your quality of life at the Cheetahs, I'm assuming you're a lot more happier now yeah, than no, you were no, then. absolutely. Like I said, I enjoyed at Bloemfontein a lot. Um, just felt the opportunities were uh, limited for me over there. Um, so, yeah, I'm really happy where I am right now. Obviously, season one was a bit of a um, shot in the a dark, you know, to a new season a new um, like competition so you don't know how it's gonna work out for you um, but yeah it looks like it's growing and uh, the MLR is like really I'm like picking up speed and it's really exciting times for everyone so just um, let's just chat about the, how would you compare the, the, the American game to the to the current South African game in terms of you know the pace of the game the physicality and, and stuff like that so um, I never played at, at like a really high level here in South Africa, so it's hard for me to like compare the two. But um, just I had a chat with uh, JP Smith from um, Seattle, and he compared uh, the MLR to the um, um, to the um, Curry Cup, and he said it's more or less the same. So yeah, I think it's about at that level. Yeah, but it's and, and I think that's that's really awesome because. Um I think the MLR is only going to go go up from here as they, they sign a lot of more new players and it seems like the Curry Cup is going really, really far down. Yeah. And um, just on that point, how's the reception been from like, the American public in the in the first couple of seasons of MLR? Do you get, guys get good crowds in at games and yeah. do people sing your name and stuff? Um, no, the singing of the name is not happening here, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Hopefully soon. Um, but no, it's been good. Like um, From season one to season two, I think season one was still really new and um, like the general public didn't really have an idea of uh, rugby but uh, from season two on uh, you know like the uh, I'm like the crowds got bigger louder so it's really good I love playing at um, Seattle because they've got like awesome support it's awesome yeah. oh, no, that is that is really pretty cool and I think it's so it's another sad thing about South African rugby I think Marty's stadium fills fills up more often than the Bulls do yeah, which sad. is yeah. which is sad but I mean it's, it's it's great for you guys and I think if, if rugby's growing in the end I suppose that's all you know we can hope for so let's chat a bit about the, the Raptors you guys ended sixth last season yep. just sort of like mid-table yep. um, but I, I looked at the teams a bit and it's not like you guys didn't try and buy a trophy like a lot of the other teams that I'm, I, I saw Stefan Armitage just sign again the other day and Joe Peterson, of course, and, and stuff like that. So how do you guys approach the next season and where do you, guys, where do you see yourselves finishing? Yeah, obviously this past season was a bit disappointing, um, finishing in the final in season one. 
um, losing in the final and then um, finishing sixth in uh, season two was a bit disappointing. But um, yeah, like you said, you know, like other teams have more key players, if I can say that. Um, you know, like guys like Joe Peterson, Ben Foden, uh, mm. uh, uh, Paddy Ryan. Um, whereas we, I think, Glendale's focused on youth. Um, which is really exciting for us mm. younger players because it gives us like the opportunity um, to make the step up and like become those players one day, you know, grow yeah. as a family, like grow as a team, um, yeah, and then make the step up as the younger players, which is really exciting, I think, for us. Yeah, no, definitely, um, and I think, yeah, I think with football it shows as well. There's a lot of, you know, I, I think because I know you're a football fan as well, Chelsea and whatever. Chelsea and City and, and to not such an extent Liverpool sometimes struggle if they just buy a whole lot of superstars yeah. and it's the teams that yeah, like the all Manchester United just focused on getting the youth players through and then and in the yeah. end they shut up really well so I know I completely back that sort of um, yeah, that sort of tactic and then you know looking at your own career and, and, and yourself um, obviously you played under, under Sean Davies and you got signed again by the Raptors where do you see yourself in three years what's the next step in, the, in, the, in your career for you yeah. now so um, for me I would love to be able to play for the US in two years time because that's when I'm um, oh. yeah like um, so I, I qualify to play for them in two years time so hopefully in two years I'll be a capped US Eagle um, but yeah a focusing season to season actually um you know, hoping to make 2019 20, 20 a really good season, and then um, yeah, just um, see where it goes from there. You okay, know, great man, and um, obviously in, in two years' time, so hopefully we'll we'll see you at the next next proper World Cup. Yeah. And then um, I know at, at school you dabbled a bit in, in in sevens as well, and I know the sevens game is growing growing really quick in the in the US. Do you have your sights set on on, on trying the sevens out at, at a stage, or focus completely on the fifteens? No, not really sevens. Um, <laughs> was more for fun in school. Um, I played one sevens tournament when I just got in the States. Uh, the worst <laughs> weekend of my life. Um, no, it's, uh, I don't think it's something that I'm going to um, focus on. I think I'm going to focus on the 15s and um, yeah. And then um, just lastly, just before we before we sign off, um, I think there's a lot of young rugby players out there in South Africa especially that are, you know, that think they they might not might not get their big break here in South Africa. So, what advice can you give to those guys, guys that are that love rugby and are on the verge of hanging up their boots for good because of a lack of opportunity? What what would your because you've been there and you've done that? What would your advice be to yeah, them? Yeah, a few things I think. Um, don't be scared to like um, risk it. You know, um, don't be scared to leave everything behind in South Africa and to like explore new things. Like abroad, whether it be here, I mean, in uh, the US, Russia, you know, wherever. I think if you want to make a success out of it, you, um, fear, you know, um, like mustn't play a big part, um, no part actually. Um, and the second thing is uh, to uh, uh, don't rush it. It's it's not a it, it's it's not like a one season sort of thing, you know. Mm. It takes two, three seasons for you to like settle in and uh, yeah, really make like a success out of it. So just um, be patient is the other thing I would say. Okay, but thanks, uh, Carly. Thanks so much for for yeah, joining sure. us. And really, we really hope. Uh, I'm sure we're going to see you in the World Cup. I mean, I know you know sort of personally. We played in the, in the same rugby team yeah. years ago, yeah. and I'm 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 completely sure that that you'll 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 make it one day. And hopefully, we see see your name in in lights in a couple of years, and we'll we'll be following your journey very closely. And hopefully, next time you're in 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 South Africa, we'll we'll chat to you again. For sure. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it.